allora vorrei chiamare qui sul palco insieme a noi per parlare di intelligenza artificiale e di sostenibilità applicata all'ambiente Rika Nakazawa Facciamo un applauso Facciamo un applauso, diamo il cambio Noi ci vediamo dopo eh Ci vediamo dopo ragazzi, ti lasciamo Ciao, buongiorno, such a pleasure to be here. I asked ChatGPT before I came on stage how I wear a dress and they told me I have to be a musician, like the one just now. Before I talk about ChatGPT and AI, what I wanted to share with you today is that after my talk today, I hope you rethink what we mean by intelligence. Intelligence is a word that has become very popular right now with artificial intelligence. But my position and my proposal is that there is nothing artificial about artificial intelligence at all. So before I start talking about how that is, why that is, let me first start by saying what is the definition of intelligence. Intelligence can be seen as the capacity to learn, to reason, to be creative, and most importantly, to problem solve. And in Hindu religion or Buddhism religion, there's the idea of the third eye. There's one eye here, one eye here, and one eye in the middle of your head, and your forehead, it's a third eye. So what I'd like to talk about today, as we think about AI, are three other eyes. I'd like for us to talk about innovation, intelligence of a different kind, and the third eye is inspiration. So my journey has been around innovation in many ways. At NTT, we're one of the largest technology services company. I have been a woman in tech my entire career. And what you see here is an image of the explosion of emerging technologies that has captivated industry, that has elevated imagination and made what people thought was impossible, possible. And this is a very important concept for us to understand of this explosion that happened due to COVID-19. So the pandemic, as painful it was, as it was, was something that really created a whole new kaleidoscope of technologies that we have the opportunity to harness and bring, bring to market. And so when we look at the different ways that sustainability has come into the industry, it has become a key topic and key concern for enterprises everywhere. And for those of you who are startups, I know that sustainability is something that is important to you as well. And for us at NTT, we have six major technology enablers that we think about. We have the digitization of operations, migration to the cloud, green coding, organizational awareness as more and more people think about AI and the role that sustainability has, data center efficiency, and of course, leveraging AI and automation. So let's talk about leveraging AI and automation. I asked ChatGPT how can AI solve for industry's sustainability challenges? Now, ChatGPT, interestingly, responded talking about itself as if it was a third person. It said, well, ChatGPT can help with information education to understand what are the biggest challenges that organizations and in industry are facing. Number two is how to promote sustainable practices. How can we learn from the different ways that organizations are addressing sustainability? Third is data analysis and problem solving. Fourth is innovation. How to create things out of existing things, putting them together and realizing new ways for us to think about the world. And lastly, collaboration and knowledge sharing. But the most important part about my question to ChatGPT was, This is what they said. It said, while ChatGPT can provide valuable support, 
it's essential to recognize that solving sustainability challenges requires collective efforts involving individuals, organizations, governments, and technological advancements. AI can be a powerful tool to augment humans, but ultimately it is up to us as a society to take action and implement sustainable practices at all levels. So, ChatGPT was not as helpful as I thought it would be to tell me what is the answer, what is the panacea to carbon, the CO2 and carbon footprint of waste and energy management. And so when we think about intelligence, as I said, the, it's the, about the ability to learn, the ability to problem solve, the ability to be creative and to plan and to figure out complex problems. Thank you, Elon Musk. I'm sure there are many Elon Musk fans in the audience here. <laughs> Elon has figured out how to put a computer into our computer. Our brain is able to process much more than today's computer. The reason why we don't is because the heating of our brain and the energy that's needed to fuel that level of processing would have our heads explode. So Elon Musk has decided to create Neuralink and in the US, just about three weeks ago, the FDA approved putting a chip inside your head. And what does that mean for intelligence? Artificial intelligence has now can be seen as something that is an extension of who we are and what we're capable of. One night at a dinner, not as good as the dinner as I've had here in Rimini, by the way, amazing pasta. I got into an argument with somebody about artificial intelligence and I said, there's nothing artificial about artificial intelligence. It's an extension of humans. It's an extension of the things that we have created, of the ways that we have taken math and science and put it to work, and art, and put it to work. And so I coined the term organic intelligence. Organic intelligence is where we are going as people, as a community, as a way of integrating digital, all the technologies that you saw on the screen earlier, and how we're gonna solve for some of the most fundamental issues that's facing us today as a planet, as a society, and as a collective community here today. The other side of the term organic intelligence has to do with the fact that if you just look at the world around you, look at your dogs, your pets, look at your garden, look at when you're pouring a glass of water in the moment, in the mornings, what you will see is a math and a design that is intelligent in nature itself. What can we learn of the tens of thousands of years that this planet has been here much longer than we humans have. What can we learn from the nature and the science and the math and the design around us that can help us save ourselves? And all you need to do is look at the bee that can figure out colors and signs, or look at the white fox that knows how to create a green tundra in its environment in the Arctic ice, or mushrooms. And for those of you that watched The Last of Us, I'm so sorry if I'm giving you PTSD, but mycelia and mushrooms are intelligent, even though I don't think they're going to create zombies. They create an intelligent network in their roots. Speaking of roots, plants. Plants figure out how to grow through photosynthesis and signals of on and off. And last but not least, my favorite is slime. In the early 2000s, a Japanese researcher from my home country, I'm born and raised in Japan, he showed that slime can figure out how to get through a maze. A simple organism as slime was able to problem solve, and if you left it alone long enough, it would create what looked like a subway system. And so all we need to do is look at the world around us and the beauty and the design and the inspiration and intelligence that's in the world around us. And we have a lot of work to do. Solving sustainability, if any of you are familiar with the UN SDGs, it's a big monumental task. These are 17 goals that each one has hundreds, if not thousands of aspects to it to unpack. And so as we think about the era that we're going through, we've been, the earth has been around for millions and millions of years. 
we have been in a Holocene into the Industrial Age. During the Industrial Age, we entered what's known as an Anthropocene. We humans are materially affecting the Earth, what it looks like, how it looks. And so my proposition to you is that everybody here has agency and a responsibility to think about intelligence, innovation, and inspiration that you all get from all, everybody that you encounter here, that you see on stage, and that you share a water boat with in the fountains outside. And I would say we're entering what's called a cosmosine. Cosmos means beautiful order, and that's what I encourage everybody to pursue. So we are in an era of what I call organic intelligence. And I encourage you to think about the next time you're having a conversation with somebody about chat GPT and artificial intelligence. Is it exogenous? Is it outside of you? Or is it within you, without us, everywhere, all around you? And before I say gracias, arigato zaimas, danke schön, and thank you, I will say this. Viamo tutti miei fratelli, sorelle, animali, alberi, oceani, rocce, musica e la terra. Grazie.